Hello everybody. That was a small little glimpse of what we do, both of us. We are two different personalities from two different regions. I belong to this country, this region, this place. This is my hometown. And I have been very lucky to have Gary Hamilton as a partner in my work, be with me in India, in Chandigarh, and share my passion. This little glimpse is a little journey that we all have done with students like you, adults, children, and young, young, young three-year-old little babies. That's some of our work. People ask me, how do you do these little lines? It's a small little form. It's just my hands and my heart. It's an obsession. Why? I live through it. I breathe with it. It's my journey. It's my every day. It's something that gives me strength to get up the next day and say, wow, it's a weekend. And on a Monday, I'm back to it. Wow, it's a Monday morning. How? Where are we with it? Danny, what do you feel when you come with it? Well, um, I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm busy wherever I am, whether I'm back in Australia or whether I'm here, but it's, uh, it's been very special coming here to India. And I, I spend probably pretty much as much time here as I do back in Australia, especially over the last four years. Um, the way I ended up getting um, my background, I, I was I started into this when I was 16. Yeah. So I've been doing it for over 40 years now. I won't tell you exactly how many years. Mm -hmm. over, but, um, I love it just as much as I did from the first day I started, and, and if not more. So. Uh, and there are a lot of people on the planet that actually love being potters, and that's what I am. So, so I'm he is always very modest with the art he does. But what's special? There are potters in the country, there's potters around the world. Gary is amongst the few potters living, breathing, working, earning every day from this art form. And he makes close to 100 pieces a day. 100 all by himself, 100 pieces of clay wedged, weighed, put on the wheel, done a production, turned the next day, kept aside to dry, put in the kiln, get them out, put it back with the glaze, fire it to about 30, 20 and out. I have been doing pottery for the last 11 years and believe you me, it's not easy. We weigh the most messy clones, and that's us. And we go to cafes in Chandigarh, where we find, will they allow us to sit here? <laughs> yes, they do, because I think that's our skin, that's how we breathe. So Gary is amongst the only ones in India, of course, when he is here, who does this kind of production in Chandigarh. Where do all these pots go? Millions and millions that he's done till date in these 45 years, he has no idea. But I've had the opportunity to travel to Australia and work in his studio and the galleries where he supplies work. I have been lucky to meet people who see the casserole and asked, Hey, is this done by you? I picked something like this some 20 odd years ago in one of those markets. Wow, that's a product. And that's a product that's living and breathing till date cool. with people. So what you see here is something very special. Gary fires to about 30-20 degrees centigrade. And that's a high temperature. That's a firing that lasts for about how many hours? Well, we've managed to cut it down some, somewhat with technology, but uh, uh, traditionally it would take about uh, somewhere between 14 and 16 hours to reach that temperature. Yeah. Uh, we now fire it around for, in around five or six hours. So it's very interesting how Gary got to it. I used to work for 11 months and of course when I came back to Chandigarh from NID Ahmedabad, people asked me, how are you going to sustain as a entrepreneur with no marketing skills just at that young age? How? How will you sustain yourself? And I was confident that Chandigarh is the place where I will go because it's home 
and second, it's an opportunity. 11 months working day lay out here and the 12th month I would gift myself a holiday to Europe to find and work with a volunteer as a volunteer bottom. One of my trips, someone told me, if you're looking for colour, head to Australia or New Zealand. And there I switched. I said, okay, let me find a potter who will be happy to have me as an employee or a worker or a labourer. <laughs> I wrote to Gary because I found him online and he refused. Oops, he refused. It didn't go well, but I insisted that he could come to India and share his little passion. If I couldn't go, I could get him over. And I had this little dream, why couldn't my country or my potter's community or ceramics reach that zenith that people have achieved in the world? Yeah, he came down to work at NID for a good five days and those five days have converted to five years gradually. <laughs> we've been lucky, challenged and we've been questioned many times. What's the point for you doing pottery at this high temperature when we don't have fuel efficient kilns? Yeah, we don't have fuel efficient kilns in India. We have potters, we have traditional potters sitting around little zones in India, Calcutta, Bangalore, South, Himachal, Jammu Kashmir, but we are unaware of them. They're closing every day, you know, they, they are just shutting business. The government is shutting businesses for them. Why? Because in the government body, there's someone called as pollution board and the pollution board says, well, you haven't paid your pollution tax, so you can't run this skill. Yes, I understand you have skill, but you can't do production. You have to close business. You have to close business by this date or there will be a bulldozer on your land. This is the state of our skilled artisans in India at the moment. Between Gary and me, it was a challenge. We had to achieve color, we had to achieve fuel efficient kilns. And in one of our workshops, where we had no kilns, nothing sustainable, we were quite disappointed with the color we got. It was just black and grays. Okay, we'll, we'll fire another 14 hours, we'll fire again. Because no way we wanted to see that, no, we can't do it. Gradually, Gary was kind enough to design a kiln in India and put it together for us. That kiln is Gary's baby in India. Right, Gary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these, these uh, kilns I've been working with, with uh, uh, low-density insulators, high-temperature insulators for since mid-80s. So I was probably one of the first people in Western Australia to take on the technology in my studio. It cost me a lot of money back at that time, around $15,000, just to line a kiln. But the fuel saving was massive. It was around 75% savings. So that meant, you know, a much, much lower carbon footprint. And uh, industry doesn't really take it on so much because it's, uh, it's initially expensive. And people are more interested in profits generally than yeah. they are. So we fired to about 1320 in five and a half hours. We've installed about 13 kilns till now. And our students have been supporting us. We've got a wide range of color that we share. We've got products that speak for us, which we customize. And we have a huge palette of students, all kinds, all levels, all age groups, who come to my studio for me and for Gary to learn from us. What's our dream? Follow your passion. It will thrive within you one day. It gives you the courage to live. No matter what the world says, it is the way for us to go. I'm sure Gary shares the same passion and it's been great. It's been a great journey for both of us here. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was something a bit different actually getting to uh, meet up with uh, Jack Meek uh, initially when she asked me if um, she could, you know, she could come and work in my studio. I had to try and explain that the Australian immigration department is sort of very hard to deal with and they don't like people just, it's very hard to get somebody here. Uh, and, and initially, before that, the, 
the, the way I actually sort of this all took place was uh, I gave up one really bad habit and took up another one, which one was smoking, and I gave up smoking, and I started Facebook. So Facebook <laughs> led me to uh, reach out to India. So, uh, so I have to be thankful for that. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for this opportunity, guys. <laughs>